Welcome to all our viewers and welcome to a new edition of Africa Today, our program bringing you all the latest news and events happening all around the African continent. My name is Angie Meher and I'll be joining you this afternoon and as usual we begin straight away with a look at some of the news making the headlines and we move to the Ministry of International Cooperation in Egypt that said the second edition of the Egyptian Cooperation Forum Egypt, ICF has planned to set a unified vision for the green transition ahead of the United Nations Climate Change Conference COP27 scheduled this November. We have more details in this report. The second edition of Egypt International Cooperation Forum, Egypt ICF, is planned to set a unified vision for the green transition ahead of the UN Climate Change Conference COP27 scheduled this November. The statement was made by the International Cooperation Ministry. This came during the participation in the annual meetings of the Islamic Development Bank group held in Sharm el-Sheikh, titled Starting Recovery from the Pandemic, Resilience and Sustainability. Daniel Mashad said the Egypt ICF will work on bringing together African finance and environment ministers to exchange viewpoints in order to draw up a unified vision and coordinate efforts so as to push forward climate action in Africa, enhance innovative and sustainable financing instruments, and narrowing the financing gap for green transition. The Egypt ICF is slated to be held in September. Africa is the least contributing continent when it comes to the carbon emissions, although it is the most affected by these emissions. The statement was made by Mashal during her participation in the G20 session. The session was held under the presidency of Indonesia on the sidelines of the annual meetings of Islamic Development Bank Group, ISDB. Mashad said the Egyptian presidency of COP27 and Indonesia's presidency to G20 stressed the importance of rallying all talks and efforts to give momentum to achieving sustainable and fair development in addition to tackling the challenges faced by the developing countries. She said the current year is vital for enhancing multilateral cooperation and facing up the development challenges. Welcome back. We're now delighted to be joined over the telephone by our guest for this afternoon, Dr. Maha El Mahagoub, the Senior Counsel of International Labour Organization. Dr. Maha, very good afternoon to you, ma'am. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for joining us, doctor. Hi. Thank you. You're welcome. Right. Uh, let's talk a bit about the latest uh, development with the Ministry of International Cooperation that said the second uh, edition of the Egyptian International Cooperation Forum is planning to set a unified vision for the green transition ahead uh, of the UN Climate Change Conference, which of course will be held in November later on this year. How important is it to set such a vision over green transition uh, in Egypt, doctor? Yes, uh, the vision of uh, developing uh, the, the country, the gap of uh, financing gap uh, all over the African continent, so it's very important nowadays, and uh, during uh, it will help the countries to prepare the invest in the low carbon mm -hmm. resilience uh, development required, and the major transformation in energy, transportation, cities, and food system sectors for mm -hmm. solutions, and of course highlighted the key priorities of COP26. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, a lot of consideration will be uh, taken uh, how to take uh, a resilience and benefit from people uh, on planet and how to, to look after uh, the green transformation. Mm -hmm. Yes. You mentioned quite a lot of fields uh, that are expected to receive you know, green transmission. What are some of the first fields that you expect? Sorry, the voice is very low. Sorry. Sorry. Yes, doctor. I said you mentioned several fields that will be receiving yes, yes. Yes, support in this regard of green transmission. What are the main or major, uh, major fields uh, that you expect to receive yes. first? Uh, I'm, uh, of course, uh, um, in, um, in uh, the African continent, we have some important fields that should be taken into consideration regarding the environment and sustainable development sector. Hmm. And, uh, of course, it's based on uh, the encouraging uh, eco-tourism, uh, for example, and establishing an eco affairs for example, in addition to how to apply uh, environmental sustainability standards to all economic sectors, such mm. as green projects, initiatives uh, with an acceleration 
of trend towards uh, popularization, organic uh, agriculture, yes. and uh, environmentally friendly industries, mm -hmm. in addition to expanding the establishment of centers, the logical enhancement of uh, Egypt's uh, international competitiveness in various fields uh, and accelerating the, uh, the transition towards the knowledge of economy. Mm -hmm. And doctor, how do you see the benefits of this green transition and especially with Egypt now in full drive uh, to, you know, achieve this green transition? How important is that, ma'am? Yes, of course, it's a very uh, 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 it's, it's very important to, to have a good steps for the for uh, the, the green transformation, and of course we are going to to, to protect the climate, the, the country, and everything. If we uh, if we set and implement the uh, the plan of how to sustain the uh, clean environment and how how to get benefit from uh, using the modern technology into these transformations mm. um, and of course uh, uh, of course how to enhance the economic growth opportunities and mm. diversifying production sources uh, growth in job opportunities and increasing competitiveness of local products as well as the rational management of environmental system mm -hmm. and natural resources, uh, creating new investment areas, and as well, of course, uh, enhancing the stability to achieve water and food security. Mm -hmm. um, very important. As well as uh, yes. protecting the health of citizens, especially in light of the representative uh, uh, precautions, mm -hmm. of course, such as the uh, corona yes. uh, virus, and uh, what about the current crisis affected by, it could be one reason affected by the climate change. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, yes, and of course, the, it's, most, it's very important and how to implement the sustainable goals of development and which is um, aligned with the, the vision of Egypt 2030. Absolutely. And doctor, now uh, there is, of course, as the ministry, uh, minister said, a need to narrow the financing gap for this green uh, transition. How can this uh, financial gap be narrowed, in your opinion, and how important is it, uh, you know, to really get this green transmission in Africa ongoing? Yes. Yeah. Uh, of course, the, the, nec the next conference will be emphasizing how to cross the bridge of financial gaps. Yes. Okay. And uh, of course, uh, uh, the Egypt Forum, Forum of International Cooperation Development Finance, which will be held in the second uh, edition next September, will yes. bring together representatives from Africa government. Uh, governments and the level of finance and environmental ministries to exchange views in order to coordinate efforts and develop unified vision to yes. advance climate action and uh, in the content of Africa to enhance innovation and sustainable financing tools. Absolutely. And right. of course, uh, how to work and to bridge the bridge of financial gap mm. in transition mm. to a green economy yes. within the framework of President Abdel Fattah Sisi mm. directions to unify the efforts of maximizing, maximizing the development cooperation ahead with the COP27 climate mm. conference. And the Finance Day, especially since Africa is the least contributor to harmful emissions yes. in the most affected to of climate finance. change as a whole. Absolutely. Right. I'd like to thank you very, very much, Dr. Maha and Mahgoub. Thank you so much, our senior counselor, International Labour Organization. Thank you so much, ma'am, uh, for your time and your insight on today's edition uh, of Africa Today. And to continue with more news from around the African continent, gunmen using explosives killed at least 21 people, including children, in an attack on a Catholic Church in southwest Nigeria. Officials reported the attack drew widespread international condemnation. More details to follow. The bloodshed at St. Francis Catholic Church in Owo Town during a Sunday service was a rare assault in Nigeria's usually safe for southwest and shocked a country grown used to attacks and mass kidnappings in the north. Spokesman for the Ondo State Governor's Office said 21 people died after gunmen detonated dynamite inside the church before opening fire. 40 people were wounded. Fragments of explosives and three unexploded improvised devices were found at the scene. No group has so far claimed responsibility for the attack and the motives were not immediately clear. Vice President Yemi Osimbajo arrived on Monday to visit some of the wounded in Owo, where he said 
perpetrators will pay for the heinous attack. The state government declared a seven-day mourning period for the victims and ordered the national flag to be flown at half-mast in Ondo. President Mohammad Buhari condemned the heinous killing of worshippers, while the UN Special Representative for West Africa and the Sahel spoke of a barbaric terrorist attack. Large-scale attacks in Nigeria's southwest are relatively rare, although kidnappings for ransom have become increasingly common. The attack came a day before the ruling APC party started primaries for its candidate in the 2023 election to replace Buhari, a former army commander who steps down after two terms in office. Security will be a major challenge for whoever wins the race to govern Africa's most populous country and the continent's largest economy. And for our final story, a spokesperson from Mali's leaders said they will take 24 months from March 2022 to restore civilian rule after the August 2020 coup. The move is the latest in negotiations with the regional bloc ECOWAS to lift sanctions that are crippling the economy. The details. Mali, West Africa's military leaders have been under pressure to restore democracy since they toppled the government and failed on a promise to hold elections in February, prompting sanctions from the economic community of West African states, ECOWAS. The transitional government spokesman Abdullahi Maiga said on national television that the duration of the transition is set at 24 months. Maiga said the decree followed an advanced stage of negotiations with ECOWAS and Mali hoped sanctions would be lifted. He said the adoption of this decree is proof of the willingness of Malian authorities to dialogue with ECOWAS. Mali's leaders and regional heads of state have been at odds over a proposed five-year election timeline that was then revised to two, a delay that was previously rejected as too long by ECOWAS. The ECOWAS bloc did not immediately comment on the 24-month decree adopted on Monday. The length of the transition has also caused a rift with Mali's partners including the U.S. and former colonial power France. Maiga said both the ECOWAS mediator on the crisis, former Nigerian President Goodluck Jonathan, and heads of state had been informed of the 24-month decree. West African heads of state met in Ghana's capital Accra over the weekend to discuss the situation and agreed not to lift sanctions, which include border closures and restrictions on financial transactions, unless interim leaders propose a shorter transition. The leaders are expected to convene for another summit before July 3. And that's all the time we have for today's episode of Africa Today. We do hope you have enjoyed it. My name is Angie Mehermini. Thanks for watching.